From the food we eat, the air we breathe, the land we dwell, to the health of our body and mind, and the well-being of all things in the universe. Unlock the science with Chula Radio Plus. Welcome to Unlock the Science. I'm Lawan Jira Suladet. Today, we will look into the issues of cannabis-based medicine in Thailand. In early 2019, Thailand joined the growing numbers of over 60 countries in legalizing cannabis for medical use. However, at this stage, only state-owned organizations, hospitals, universities, and agriculture cooperatives are entitled to cultivate, produce, and study cannabis for medical treatment. Recreational cannabis remains illegal in Thailand. People had used cannabis for therapeutic treatment since ancient civilization times. But in the mid-20th century, cannabis was classified as narcotic, with World Health Organization recommendation to recognize the medicinal and therapeutic potentials of cannabis. In December 2020, United Nations reclassified cannabis and deleted it from the deadly drug list subject to strict control measures. In a report published in 2019, WHO mentioned that several countries have permitted the use of cannabis for the treatment of medical conditions, such as chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting, pain, sleep disorders, and muscle spasticity due to the multiple sclerosis. There are ongoing studies on the medicinal benefit of cannabis to treat a variety of symptoms and conditions. Although research shows our brain and body have receptors which interact with chemicals in cannabis and which then can exert their effects on our nervous and immune systems. In the past decade, cannabis-based medicine use and production in countries, mostly in the West, has grown and are expanding fast. Cannabis, or gancha in Thai language, was a common plant found in household backyards for centuries. The herb was used in cooking, smoking, and preparations of medicines. Local doctors and healers cook up their potions with cannabis to treat illness, such as headache, joint and muscle pains, seizures, paralysis, indigestion, skin disease, as well as to boost health and appetite. However, when Thai government follow world movements in rendering cannabis illegal, cannabis medicine practice were forced underground. Recent legalization of medical cannabis in Thailand has brought back those old cannabis medicine. Already, Department of Traditional Thai and Alternative Medicine, under Ministry of Public Health, is producing more than a dozen of medicine with cannabis mixture. They are available with prescription at hundreds of cannabis clinics popped up in state hospitals throughout Thailand. Among the formula produced by the department, the cannabis extract called Gansha Oi, Desha formula, is in high demand. The formula is originated by Desha Siripat, who is a farmer and farming activist. He came up with his cannabis extract some 10 years ago to treat himself. He faces a cancer risk as five members in his family, including his mother, have died of liver cancer. Over the years, he unlawfully grew and prepared cannabis and eventually hand out his cannabis infused in coconut oil to patients in need. The number of people benefiting from his cannabis oil reached up to 40,000, and cancer patients are among the large group. Healthcare system in Thailand is mainly based on conventional medicine or Western practice. 
Department of Traditional Thai and Alternative Medicine then led a study on the use of Deja formula cannabis oil with 18,000 patients in state hospitals. The one-year research was carried out by conventional doctors, and the data was managed through the Clinical Research Center of Chulalongkorn University. Dr. Patapong Ketsambun is a member in the research team. He is keen on the use of medical cannabis and believes that at least 8 to 14 million patients would benefit from integrating cannabis medicine into the Thai healthcare system. After graduating from Faculty of Medicine, Jilalongkorn University, Dr. Patapong has been practicing and teaching at Faculty of Medicine, Konkan University in the northeastern part of Thailand. He is now an associate professor and heads the faculty's family medicine unit. I have talked to him about medical cannabis in Thailand. Dr. Patapong, you have been advocating the use of medical cannabis for more than 10 years. Why are you in favor of cannabis-based medicine? Because it is one of the safe and effective medicines for many medical conditions. It's been used to treat human diseases for thousands of years. Our modern medicine started only a hundred some years. And people can be more self-reliant using cannabis to treat themselves. Do you prescribe cannabis medicine in your practice? Yes, I recommend patients on the appropriate use of medical cannabis for medical conditions like pain, insomnia, poor appetite, muscle spasm, inflammation in the bodies. Cannabis medicine is very good in relieving a side effect of chemotherapy or radiation for cancer patients. It's been studied uh, abroad and many, many countries now paying uh, heavy attention to the use of cannabis for many, many uh, medical conditions. Large number of people in provinces have signed up to get access to Deja Familiar Cannabis Soy. Why is it in demand? What is its therapeutic indications? I think uh, many patients, they were dissatisfied with the medicine they were taking. Uh, the symptoms of the illness still persist. The need to try new things that might help. Some who were suffering from incurable diseases like cancer, Parkinson's diseases, uh, might like to be cured. And the most common illnesses, people are using uh, Desha cannabis oil, uh, uh, insomnia, pain, migraine, nausea, Parkinson's disease, allergy, and symptoms related to cancer and cancer treatment, like nausea, vomiting. How effective is it? The study done by the Department of Thai Traditional Medicine and Alternative Medicine recently uh, shown that the Desha cannabis oil is, is really effective with statistical significance. They can relieve all the symptoms and the quality of life of the patients who were taking Desha cannabis oil improved significantly. As I understand, Desha cannabis oil was developed by an ordinary man who has no conventional medical or pharmaceutical trainings. Are you yourself and another medical doctor ready to use it? Dr. Desha, uh, he is knowledgeable on this subject for probably more than five or six years. So he learned and he uh, used the medicine on the real patients. Uh, before us, before the Department of uh, Thai Traditional Medicine or Ministry of Public Health or any 
modern doctors. So I think we trust him, and actually he is the one who donate the cannabis formula medicine to the government and made it public. Anyone can use the same formula without paying any license. We would like to uh, expand the study so that more patients can have access to the Desha cannabis oils medicines uh, and modern uh, medical doctors as well as Thai traditional doctors be participating and experience the use of uh, Desha cannabis oils uh, because uh, we can ensure the quality of the medicine. The medicines being tested for the uh, quality and for the uh, contaminations. However, I could say that uh, there are a lot of cannabis products available in black markets that we cannot guarantee the quality. So we have to be cautious. And some of the underground or black market uh, products, uh, they were tested and it showed that uh, some contaminations with heavy metals or pesticides. How big are the underground users? Recently, uh, a study uh, supported by the Health System Research Institute shown that uh, as many as 800,000 people uh, using the underground products. You've been organizing workshops to educate the use of medical cannabis to doctors and medical personnel, including patients. Are they comfortable to use cannabis for medical treatment? Some of the medical practitioners, they are not confident to use cannabis, including patients. Some of the patients, they are not confident to use cannabis. There are many reasons because cannabis has been illegalized for more than 40 years in Thailand. And people perceive cannabis as something bad. It can harm your health. Uh, can got negative effects. However, I like to uh, give you some example about the uh, traditional use of cannabis by lay people. In the past, they just use a small amount of cannabis leaf or cannabis flowers. They put in a pot of uh, soup or noodle soup. They just got a delicious food and no negative side effects. So that means uh, using this approach, but uh, in present day, because people know how to concentrate the medicine using uh, solvent. So the possibilities to get uh, an overdose. And we have seen people who uh, overdose can be medicine and been admitted to the emergency room. Uh, that's why some would be afraid to use it any longer. Therefore, we have to educate them how to use it properly. Now that medical cannabis is legal, what do you want to see happening in Thailand? I like to see that people can grow cannabis at their backyard without any need to get any permission from anyone. This will enable them to be more self-reliant. They can treat themselves. Cannabis medicines should be available in all hospitals in Thailand, public or private, or even the private clinics, both um, conventional medicine or traditional medicines or alternative medicine facilities. And we need to have a mechanisms to guarantee the quality of the products. 
We will take a short break now. You are listening to Unlock the Science on Chula Radio Plus. Dr. Patapong has told us that he sees the possibility of cannabis medicine, including Deja Roy, be developed into national drugs list. If that happens, it means cannabis would become a medicine available for the general public. What is needed to be thought of then is cultivating of cannabis plants. How could the medical community get a kind of cannabis with high therapeutic quality? In the beginning, production of cannabis-based medicine as well as cannabis cultivation were carried out by using dry cannabis leaves and seeds, mostly from confiscation by Thailand's Narcotic Control Board, which is the equivalent of United States Drug Enforcement Administration, or DEA. Between 2019 and 2020, this Thai agency confiscated 18 tons of marijuana, 3.8 tons of which were non-contaminated marijuana, which were provided for cannabis medical production and research. Chulalongkorn University, among a number of universities in Thailand, is working on breeding new biological cannabis strains to develop medical-grade cannabis for pharmaceuticals. The aim is to breed new strains, which contain high CBD or cannabidol. CBD is non-intoxicated cannabis compound, mostly used in pharma industry. Mixed breeding cannabis plants generally found in Thailand yield more intoxicated substances. That's why Thai stick or Thai marijuana, which were much sought after during the 60s and 70s, are known for their get-high effects. In its cultivation of medical cannabis, Chulalongkorn University also tried to lay down practice and technologies of good farming as prototypes for farmers, who in the near future will be allowed to grow cannabis to supply the medical industry. In addition, the university also set up a research cluster of experts in multidisciplinary area to conduct research on cannabis for medical use. Their goals are to produce cannabis-derived drugs with cutting-edge technology and to increase public awareness on the proper use of medical cannabis. We will find out what cannabis and its natural substances research cluster or CANS Research Cluster is working on from its director, Associate Professor Dr. Son Ganok, Wimon Mang Kang. Dr. Son Ganok also teaches at Department of Pharmacognosy and Pharmaceutical Botany, Faculty of Pharmaceutical Science, Chulalongkorn University. We're working on the, the product uh, with together with Faculty of Dentistry, and um, we have uh, there are at least three products now that uh, in a prototype. The first one is oral paste ointment that used for wound healing. The second one is artificial saliva, and the third one is the mouthwash. Uh, but uh, the the first one is the oral paste. Is um, now we are ready to do it in clinical trials. But the last two one it's um, still in a prototype one. So. Are there any other research and development of medical cannabis project in the pipelines? Uh, we are thinking of doing more on the skin lesions, and we have now started to talk with faculty of medicines so that we can expand the indication of the cannabis product that we have. The prototype itself, like the formulation, uh, many formulation, it's actually, uh, we have to think about setting of the production in the production, you have many dosage forms, but one dosage form can do for many indications. For example, we're doing oral paste, uh, which is ointment. The ointment actually can do for the skin as well. So from that, we can apply to skin lesion very easy from the first formulation, just adapt it a little bit, and then we can use it for skin. But we have to do is we have to think about formulation is not difficult for us, but we have to find the, the team to do the clinical trials 
in other way, other other area beside dentistry, and we working on uh, with the team, uh, the faculty of medicine. I also work with faculty of science. The the faculty of science uh, mainly we working on chemistry. Uh, the chemistry that we do focus is analytical chemistry. Uh, we want to do the test method, like the test kit that. Uh, it could be applied to consumer or the grower who want to grow cannabis. Soon, there will be more people having it. Maybe you could have it at home as well. <laughs> you can grow it at home, but you have to be certain that what you have grown in in your house, the the um, the major compound called THC, it's not over the limit that the law allow you to have it. Why does the TST cannot be over the limit? Okay, scientifically, it has psychoactive. <laughs> you, you will have some euphoria if you take the TSC. If you want to grow it at home, then you cannot have the plant that having TSC over 1% in the plant. That's why we're thinking of the way to test the plant if you if you know the limit, right, um, then you need a tools to test it at home, which I think that is very important. So we we are thinking of that and trying to find uh, the the analytical method that it could be easy to make a test kit and sell it to customers. Mm -hmm. And after two thousand twenty four. Foreign companies will be allowed to participate in the cannabis medicine industry in Thailand. Will that overshadow what Thailand have been doing, especially uh, in terms of research? The, the research in Thailand, we have to um, admit that it's uh, very way behind other countries because we just started to do the research seriously. Um, so we, we know that some of the technology that we cannot go like uh, maybe better than them but maybe we could do it <laughs> who knows right uh, something like extraction method uh, in our case we are thinking of the technology called green technology the green technology is using solvent that is uh, good for environment <laughs> that is why it's called green uh, but anyhow, this is like the new, new, uh, new technology that people just starting to do the research, and so we are also uh, starting to do that, and that is one way to do extraction method uh, with the technology. So, which area in the public health do you think we should focus in production and research of cannabis-based medicine? Then, I think the the thing that we have to uh, do the research is still focus on the medicine. For the deep technology, I think we cannot follow other countries very easy. But for traditional medicine, I think we still have the way to go. And for the public health as well, if I think the government goes for the good direction by now, uh, that they want to promote traditional medicine. The thing that we need to do is t trying to find the evidence, proving the indication that it's not just like the word of mouth that people saying this is good, 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 and then who knows it's good. So we need scientific to prove it. That's why I think that in the, in the research today and the future, we should focus on clinical trials. And the product, maybe we can focus on the traditional medicines as well. The legal use of medical cannabis is just a first step to open the door to more utilization of cannabis in Thailand. Further changes in regulation and restriction of cannabis need to be considered to facilitate the use and production of medical cannabis. At the same time, it is necessary to implement more research and education programs on medical cannabis to prepare the public before cannabis medicine can become common drugs in Thai healthcare system. Unlock the Sign would like to thank Associate Professor Dr. Patapong Ketsambun of Konkan University and Associate Professor Dr. Son Kanok Wimon Mangkang of Chulalongkorn University. I hope you enjoy our program. You can listen to Unlock the Signs on Jula Radio Plus 
at FM 101.5 every Saturday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. You can also listen and follow us on our website, curadio.jula.ac.th, and our Facebook page. Our program is also available as podcast. See you again next Saturday. Have a nice day. Unlock the Science is edited and produced by Sinfa Tunsorawut with Lawan Jirasurade as the program host and co-producer. <laughs>